Uh, diplomats have confirmed Iran's begun enriching uranium at a brand new nuclear facility. The West has slammed the move as a provocation at a time when brinksmanship between the U.S. and Iran has reached boiling point. Let's now get some more on this uh, from Patrick Henderson, uh, associate editor from Infowars.com. Uh, thank you for coming on the program today. Uh, before we get into the issue of uh, uranium enrichment with Iran, uh, the latest angle I want to take with you is this. As we know for the past week or so, in fact, it was 10 days uh, in the very recent past, Iran was staging uh, naval and military war games in the Gulf. We're now hearing the U.S. and Israel are gearing up for joint military exercises in the Gulf as well. It's just as Tehran announces it will surely stage what it's calling, quote, the greatest war games ever seen in the region. Who's pushing who here, do you think? You know what? This looks vaguely familiar to power politics and power geopolitics that we saw pre-1991. I'm talking about the Cold War, Rory. Look, the main subject here we're looking at is we saw in the last week a direct reaction in the world oil markets. We saw prices spike. The price of oil per barrel is going up, okay? This is real creation of wealth for the oil industry. I do not see the timetable right now with Iran as being on schedule for a, a preemptive attack from the United States and or Israel. I see this as drawing out over a longer period. All right, now let's, uh, let's go back to the issue of uh, diplomats confirming Iran has begun enriching uranium at a brand new nuclear facility. Uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it's unable to verify that Iran's nuclear program remains peaceful. Why then has Tehran decided to push ahead with launching this new facility, which experts say could produce pre-weapons grade uranium? Well, again, this all, this all depends on your perspective. Um, if you're an expert from the International Atomic Energy Agency or the UN, uh, you'll see this as a possible move towards building a nuclear weapon. If you're an expert from a neutral party, you might see it as something in, uh, with regards to nuclear power. Also, you have to not ignore the fact that part of uh, Iran's industrial nuclear program has to do with the medical industry, okay? Iran is pushing forward to be a leader in technology as far as medicine and pharmaceuticals. And also, this is a base requirement to do some of this, um, some of this kind of activity industrially, okay? So we can't ignore that like any other country would pursue such, a, such an ambition. So as, as we've seen, Iran conducting uh, 10 days of naval exercises in the Gulf, the West and the International Atomic Agency bearing down on Tehran over its nuclear ambitions. Uh, the Iranian president is currently visiting his allies in South America. Um, how much international support does Iran really have at this point? Um, and how is that affecting the situation in the Gulf region? I is it becoming more isolated possibly? Uh, I think the, uh, the idea of the, the Western uh, bloc, the Axis powers of the United States, the Britain, France, and Israel, is to isolate Iran. This is their first step. First we isolate, then we impose sanctions. Now they hope to have an oil uh, embargo, so to speak, um, a bull ring around Iran, but major problem crept up last week. Uh, we saw South Korea has um, made it very clear that they want to continue to import Iranian crude. Now also Japan is mulling over this sanction because they are also a major importer of Iranian oil. And China has announced officially that it wants to, Iran to be its number two oil importer in 2012. This is, and also you have Russia off in the wings as well, who's a trading partner with Iran. So this, these sanctions that they've tried to put forward by the U.S., uh, they might work in the short term to apply pressure, but I don't think, uh, by the looks of it economically, that it's going to have a major long-term impact on Iran. Also, Iranian steel industry is uh, coming up in the world. They're becoming a major steel exporter, okay? And the world, places like China, they need oil, they need steel, and Iran is there to produce some of these raw materials. So the, you can't ignore the economics of this situation. Politically, the U.S wants to isolate them, but economically, I don't think it's going to be very easy to contain Iran. Well, it's very interesting how you bring in the uh, economic uh, angles to this ongoing argument here with, with the West uh, uh, putting more pressure on Iran. But as you just uh, duly said, that uh, uh, Iran is, is big trading partners with Russia and China. Does the West indeed want, want the East to stop getting uh, sources and mineral wealth from Iran? If I may, just for a moment here, 
uh, get, go on to the fact that we've just learned now, we've been reporting today, uh, that Tehran has just sentenced an Amer a so-called American, uh, uh, so American spy to death for having links to the CIA. Uh, why do you think the decision was made uh, to issue the verdict now, particularly when tensions are so high? You look at the nuclear agenda the West is bearing down on. You look at the naval military exercises. Why the verdict announced now? Well, you have to look at this not just in terms of our perspective looking in on Iran. You've, it's very important to look at this also from the Iranian perspective looking out at the world. The leadership in Iran is under a tremendous amount of pressure externally. That is obvious. They also have to uh, show the people of Iran that they're not going to be bullied, uh, for instance, by the West uh, with, re and with regards to economic sanctions and UN activities and being expelled from the Human Rights Council, and the list goes on. Now, the, the Iran also uh, broke up, and Lebanon broke up a major uh, string of U.S. Uh, operatives and U.S. spies. You saw this in the news back in no uh, late November, early December, okay? Uh, they caught them in Beirut. Uh, Iran also claims to have uh, captured a number of other spies uh, in te in around Tehran uh, during that same period. This would put a kink in the sort of operation that maybe, or the timetable that the U.S. and Israel might have had. So the ground is the, the soil is not fertile to have an all-out attack right now. So I well, I mean, I as you say, the ground the ground may not be fertile to, to have an attack of some sort right now. However, certainly there is a, a lot of uh, geopolitical and uh, an economic pressure being brought in from the West and perhaps being uh, felt by the East as well. Uh, Patrick Henderson, live from yep. London, uh, associate editor for Infowars.com. Many thanks indeed. Thank you.